Hello, hello, back again. Today it's still raining in Cremona. It's for weeks now that I would like to cook oil varnish in my garden. And I'm looking forward also because I would need a little bit of varnish, but meanwhile we are just uh, doing other videos. And so this is another one which I actually wanted to do. So before we cook varnish in my garden, we make a little bit of varnish with spirit, okay? In spirit varnish is nothing else than varnish made with alcohol, okay? Alcohol is spirit and uh, you can, uh, for years here in Italy it was red and uh, to sign that you cannot drink it, now it became transparent. Anyhow, we buy the one in the shop where you can buy even the linseed oil and things like this for varnishing and fine arts supplier. The recipe, which is somehow, especially in the beginning in violin making, is such a miracle formula that the world is looking for the varnish recipe. And now after 35 years of violin making, I can tell you that the recipe is certainly something, but probably you have it already in your pocket. Just pull out your smartphone, search for a recipe, and as long as you like it, it will probably be the best. And then you just start on making your experience and you will discover certain things which do not work. Me the same, I came to Cremona and I got some varnish recipes and everybody said, don't give it away to everybody because it's so secret and everything. And this stuff didn't really work, you know. And all the mistakes and strange things which happened, the varnish didn't apply and went away, uh, didn't dry, and, and, and. It's just, just name all the problems you have. And I made them all these mistakes. Now, the recipe I'm reusing really for especially the lower grade instruments, the uh, beginner uh, level instruments, the Scala Perfetta, and, but also the workshop made instruments which we all make together under my supervision, the Linea Maki, are varnished with a spirit varnish. And once it is applied and everything is ready and you look at the instruments, every time I'm really surprised how similar one kind of instrument, one kind of varnish is to one to the other type of varnish. So I mean spirit varnish and oil varnish because it depends a lot of, on your way of how you put it on. And so if I put it on one or another, you can't tell the difference what kind of varnish I used. I love to varnish with oil varnish and if you just pull me into the corner, push me into the corner and say, what is the best? Then I would say I would recommend oil varnish. But still, the spirit varnish has its advantages and it's also fun to varnish and it's a good way to to tell to somebody, yeah, can you just put on two or three layers of transparent varnish and then they do it for you. And this is, so it's, it's a, also very practical. So, the varnish we do today, um, probably you would love to make it like spread a very nice uh, glass um, jars like this and then steer it on the fire and then, and I did it also for many years. After many years, all the things which were inside, which didn't um, dry, I took off and I don't put the varnish anymore in something like this, but the spirit varnish I use empty plastic containers from the, from the spirit I was using before and then I open it and I put everything in here. So I have here a scale and there I put everything inside. So now it's a little bit difficult to show you, but do you trust me? Yes, you trust me, come on. Because I need to see um, how much I put in. So I put this on and then we put it on and then we put inside all the resins. Now, Min told me that she Oh, she did it already. This is nice, huh? Um, you see me still? I hope so. So this is benzoe, okay? We put it later on. Then we have curcuma, which is just giving a nice yellow color. Uh, also used uh, goma gutta, but goma gutta is very poison, so I don't use it anymore. And it's just put it inside in order to get a yellow color. 
Then we have Mastix, which is coming from Kios, from Greece. And uh, in the past years, um, people even cleaned their teeth with it. They just took this from the trees, they collected it, they were chewing it, and when you chew it, it becomes white like a chewing gum. And it is a, a nice taste. And even nowadays, they make a nice liquor from a liquor from Mastix from Kios, and you can uh, also buy it, certainly. And it is actually very nice taste. Me, who was actually it's an interesting taste. You want to taste that? It's really, huh? it's just really great. Hmm? I think it's, uh, it's now for many years that I have it. I think it is more interesting that I have it. So in probably in five years, I, I was drinking my first centimeter. You should see the face of Nina, you know. <laughs> but but it's, it's really, it's, it's, uh, it's worth tasting it. And if you don't want to drink it, you can chew it, okay? Then we have here Sandaraka, which is nothing else than Ginebro. And it's in English, it is a juniper. It's used as a, a basic material in order that it's, it's getting a little bit more constant uh, of, of varnish that you have a nice texture and you know? otherwise there's nothing because the main ingredient is alcohol which goes into the blood circulation of Nina right now and this <laughs> one is evaporating so that's why people are so happy when they're varnishing because the alcohol is... okay never got broken up today until today with uh, varnish and with spirit varnish and then the basic ingredient of a, a spirit varnish is shellac now on the shellac especially in my first years i was really um, thinking a lot of how i can uh, uh, do things uh, better and more transparent and everything so I was considering to, to have an even a better uh, shellac and then we put it, it into alcohol and into the fridge in order that the wax gets out, the nasty wax because that was the fault, the varnish is not transparent and, and, and but now after many years I think I'm so happy if there is some soft wax inside and believe me, after a few years, it will be nice transparent. Just calm down. It doesn't have to be immediately from the first day super transparent. So I take the shellac, which I think Sweaty Murray would have taken. You go here in every you know, shop where they you know, sell um, varnishes and, uh, and uh, supplies to uh, paint and decorate your house here in Cremona, and you ask for. 500 grams of, of uh, Gomaraca Angelo and this is what you get. It's just shellac. Very easy. And this is the quantities actually we put inside. The only thing I still have to weigh is this one. And on 1.5 liters I put 8 grams. So we have here approximately 3 liters of alcohol. So we put in 16 grams of curcuma. Okay. Now I put them all inside and uh, then you can see what I'm doing. So this one here since I have to put it on zero, zero and then of this one of the curcuma we have on three liters of alcohol which in the beginning of my recipe were like five liters, but then I didn't have the patience to have such a so liquid varnish, so I took always more and more like alcohol away. So now I turned out the same ingredients only from three liters of alcohol. So it's a little bit more dense what's getting out, and still for me as a, an expert, it's still too liquid and I don't have the patience to wait. So I always want things now it's zero. And now we put here 16 grams of this curcuma we are here on 8, 9, 11, 14 oh, 16 okay 
It has also a nice taste. Yeah? So 16 grams of curcuma, in case the result for you would be too yellow, you just don't put the curcuma inside and you have a nice transparent brownish colored varnish. Okay? Curcuma is the first thing. Then we have benzoate, 50 grams of benzoate, which makes the varnish a little bit more, let's say, shiny in surface when it is drying. And it has also a very nice smell. Then we have here the mastix, which should be 80 grams. Hold on, I have to see if this is 80. Yes, that's correct. So 80 grams of mastix. Um, you can certainly choose every piece of mastix which comes into your varnish. I believe that the more simple you keep things, the, most, the easier it is. And um, some people make easy things complicated. We make complicated things a little bit more easy. Okay, so that was 80 grams of mastix. The recipe I will write down later on. So in order that you think that here we don't want to give away top secrets, this is Anchor's secret spirit varnish. Okay, and then here, this one here. Just double check if this is what I wanted to put inside. Perfect. 200 grams of uh, juniper. No. So instead of making here gin, things like this, we make here varnish. Okay. It's just the same. Okay. You can also lick it if you want all the details, this one we did already. And now comes the shellac, which I'm already anxious to do it in front of you because it turns usually out to be in a big disaster. So this is the recipe, which I will write later on, okay? Okay? And now we use this sheet of paper as a thing that we can Pour this in here. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but probably this is not a good idea today, huh? Since I'm a child, I'm always doing the most 
dangerous things without protection. Be sure that it's, it's closed and then we, okay, you can see the flakes of the shellac inside. Don't leave it for, especially in the beginning, too long and then it's, it's clumpy and then it takes a long way to that. Also, you saw the pieces of paint. So, uh, it takes a few days to get the whole thing solving, but you, we don't have any hurry, right? So, we just leave it like this and we put it down. And we give it a shake. So it's standing over there, and sometimes you just do it. After a few days, you will have it like this. Okay. Now this one here is the same varnish. You see, it's already very transparent, and the things which don't solve are down below. Okay. So now, since I today I don't varnish. If I was varnish, I just go inside and then take out a little bit. Otherwise, I just put it like this. So you can shake a little bit all those things which are on the ground and um, that's it. Anything else to tell? Before I use it, I certainly have to filter the varnish. So from a container like this, then after I filter it, so that means I, I pour it into another jar with a little bit of, of uh, nylon, um, how do you call it, collant, um, collant, they understand? I hope so. Um, you put it into small jars, you filter it without forcing too much. If it doesn't go through, just leave it, take it away, throw it away, next one, and, and, and. So if you caught me already buying lipstick, you know that I buy it to fit the feet of the bridge. And if you caught me by buying collants, you know that I'm filtering my spirit varnish. This one here turns out to be filtrata, okay? Great! I hope this was at least, even in a rainy day like this in Cremona, a great day for you even. Down below you get the, the recipe once again. Don't worry to forget it. You get it. Have fun. Bye bye. See you next time. And subscribe.